Halo Wars 2. Is it worth a buy? Let's read the words, the words of Billy Gates. Actually, it's not Billy Gates, it's Microsoft, and he's kind of, you know, saving the world. Get on with it. The heroes of Halo Wars return to find themselves and the galaxy in more danger than ever. Following the events of Halo 5, the all-new story is told in action-packed missions set on the legendary Halo destination known as The Ark. Players will strategically command overwhelming firepower in large-scale battles against the terrifying threat facing the UNSC and all of humanity at a staggering two frames a second. It's only now and then, but yeah, it does have FPS issues. Anyway, what is Halo Wars 2? Well, the first Halo Wars wasn't even out on the PC. I played it on the Xbox 360 and it was hilariously bad. It was the console's answer to real-time strategy and... It was best that they just keep away from it and do what consoles do best. X-ray vision, third person, dumbed down, bell ringing games. So this is a RTS game for the next gen consoles. So I was I was very expecting, what I expected was this. This is I'll tell you what I expected, then I'll tell you what I got, and then I'll tell you whether it's worth getting or not. I expected a real time strategy game where you could just, you know, build your base where you want, because that's what we want in a real-time strategy game. It's on the PC, so I expected excellent keyboard and mouse controls, all the usual stuff that you get in all other RTS games, you know, like attack move and, you know, rebinding the key so that you can build units when you don't have to, go, without having to go back to the base and all that. Just the kind of stuff that you expect in a real-time strategy game, because, let's face it, this is going up against StarCraft 2, it's going up against Grey Goo, it's going up against Command and Conquer, it's going up against Lashes of the Singer, it's going up against all the PC RTS games, Total Annihilation, the lot. And it's £64, guys. You can get it for £49 on certain places. Uh, I've got mine on Green Man Gaming for 32 because it's 15% off, link in the description if you want to buy it. I'd really hear the rest of the review first. I didn't get any of that. I, I pretty much got what I got in Halo Wars on the 360. You can only build your base where you're told. You can only build as many structures as you're told because essentially each building has a space for it and you can only put buildings where there's a space and you only get six slots on the main base. You do um, uncover other areas of the map in skirmish mode where you can build further buildings but it's kind of shit when you can't place your buildings where you want i mean you know that's one of the main strategic elements of an rts game is placing your structures because you want your power towards the back well out the way and defended because if your power goes down it's game over in an rts game so you need that out the way you also want your turrets well forward away from your buildings but you can't you've got to build your turrets around your buildings they do have a long range on them but still not the point i want to be able to and you can only put four turrets down around your base it's it's kind of it's it's, it's like here's an rts game for children um it's you know we don't want to go into the complicated stuff that you get on pc this is a dumbed down one for you there you go you've got your little rts's you can build your little bases build your little units and fight across the the, the little maps and there you go have a good one that's the impression I got. It was kind of like, you know, when you, you go into schools and you teach maths to little kids, you know, you, you're not going to say, let's learn Pythagoras' theorem today. You're not. You're going to say two plus two is five. That's what you're going to do. You're not going to go into advanced mathematics. And this is kind of that same thing. You're going into a school and they, they can't do proper RTS. So you give them this. You say, hey, look, look, look. There you go. This is a dumbed down RTS. Now, it's also made totally for a controller. Like, like totally for a controller. The keyboard controls are garbage. And as you've probably guessed, it doesn't have an attack move command. Um, but your units do attack while they move. But it's still not the same. You can group units. You can select, you know, the usual control one, control two, and group your units out. It does have a lot of the other commands. Like if you double click on a unit, it will select all units of that type and things like that. But you cannot build units at your base unless you are actually looking at your base, clicking the bloody buildings and saying, I want to build one of them. You know, which is bollocks because one of the most important parts of an RTS game is being able to bind a key to build units so that you can be attacking the enemy base and at the same time reinforcing yourself. You can't do any of that. 
it's not a serious RTS game. Let's be honest, it's not. It's just a bit of dumbed down fun. It's also the campaign ruined by awful cutscenes that are just so bloody annoying. They really are. You know, many a time you'll come across a group of enemy units and you'll be just launching an attack into them and then the game will say, just a second mate, I, I want to show you something. And then it'll pan across to this boss who'll go, how dare you come here? All the meantime, your units are getting raped because you're not even being able to control them. It's got, I shall crush you because I am Strubbelov the Gromdom. You know, and it's like, will you just go f*** yourself, mate, because my units are actually dying. And then the camera, once he's finished his little party piece, the camera will go back to your units who are right in the middle of a freaking battle. Another thing that it does is, all the time it does this, it's hilarious, I streamed this. We all found it so funny in the stream. You're having this battle, to what the like final battle of the mission that you're on. You get down to one unit left or something, and then you just kill their unit, and you survive with like two or three units. And then you get a cutscene showing you the battle and what happens next. But in the cutscene, there's about a thousand units and buildings and bombs. None of this actually happened in the battle you were fighting, but it's all happening there in the cutscene. And then the cutscene goes away and you're left with that one little unit saying, Hi, that didn't really happen, did it? No, no, it didn't. It's just garbage. The cutscenes are just, they ruin the game. They just fucking ruin it. They're an annoyance, an annoyance. It's got boss fights as well because obviously it's a console game and console gamers like boss fights. They love, mom, mom, I'm boss down, mom. You know, they, they love that. They love boss fights, bless them. They, they love the little boss fights, you know, it's, it's so 10 year old. Uh, the boss, how do they beat the bot? How do they beat the bot? The bot, the level four boss. How do, you, how do you beat the level four boss? Hey. Well, I'll tell you how you beat the level four boss. What the level four boss does, and I he's not really the level four boss, but he's a boss. What he does is he, he'll say, I'm now calling down this. And, and he'll get a big circle, which says he's calling down something. So you move your troops out of the circle. He calls down all this stuff that destroys a few ants on the floor. And then it all goes away. And then you run in and rape his face again. And then he'll say, I'm calling down this. And then, you, then you'll get a, one of your troops. will also he'll say, hey, by the way, he's calling down this. He's calling down. You better get out of the way. Then another guy will say, yeah, get your troops out of the way because he's calling down this. So you move your troops out of the way. Then he calls down this and then it kills a few more ants then you rush back in and, and that's the that's the way the game goes you have to attack these other turrets these turrets that are they're not turrets i don't know what they are the the strongbunts and they are protected by these flying things that fly round and round but you've got a mac cannon here yeah, a mac cannon and you fire the mac cannon at this from your leader powers which i'll come and do in a second and what that does that destroys all these little flying things that are going round and round it so you can then go in and attack the thing that they were protecting but what annoys me is what annoy it's so obvious how you do it but there's always a member of your team there to tell you they'll say go in now go in now go in now they've gone attack it you better get out now because they're coming back. They're coming back. You better get out. They're coming back. Use your Mac cannon across the back. Yeah, you've killed them. Right, go back in and, and attack it now. They're coming back. They're coming back. You better get out. Use your Mac cannon. Use it. Yeah, you've used it right now. They've gone. Get back in and attack it. They're coming back. They're coming back. You know, just f off. You know what it's like? It's like watching a movie with that horrible little twat who tells you everything. Oh, you love this bit, you love this bit. He comes out of the window with a sniper rifle and shoots him right down there, right through the face. Watch this, watch, watch. Hey, Mac, watch this, watch. He's gonna get shot in the face. Three, there it goes, how do you like that? That was great, wasn't it? Wasn't that so good? It's like that. You, you know, you've got a portal on the map and I was just about to send all my troops through the portal and he goes, I wouldn't send all your troops through the portal. It's probably a trap. I would just send one scout unit through the portal because you never know. He's up to something. We think he's up to something. Don't send all your troops. Mac, don't. Don't send all your troops. Don't. 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 It's like, just go f*** yourself. If I want to send all my troops through the portal, I will. But I sent one and it was a big trap. <laughs> Who would have known it? And, and that's the game. All the way through, holding your f hand like a nanny it's like the nannies at school that used to walk around the play yard with all the little kids who were scared of everything and they'd hold the hands and they'd you know they'd walk around and they wouldn't play with the big boys playing football over there the nannies would hold your hand and they would say oh you're just walking with me are you not playing with the big boys Mac? shit but i say it wasn't me i didn't used to do that guys i, I was playing football me i was playing and that's the way it is throughout the entire campaign, guys. It, it just is. It's an annoying, f***ed up, hand-holding, cutscene-ridden, boss-fighting pile of bilge that's built for a controller. 
and um, I quite like it. It's actually, it's actually quite fun to play, to be honest with you. Um, if you are a console player, that's the thing. That's what you have to get. But we'll we'll move on. We'll move on to skirmish mode. Skirmish mode has about six or seven maps, and uh, it has you know one v one, two v two, three v three, and all of that. And you can set the personality of the AI. You can play skirmish with AI. You can play skirmish with friends. Um, you can <coughs> mix and match, co-op against the AI, and. Um, with the skirmish mode you can change the difficulties from very easy to legendary and the ai is pretty good i have to say the pathfinding is a bit wank at times but the ai is pretty good and the units that you get are pretty good they're, they're, they're straight out of command and conquer you've got your your little scout units you've got your jeep units you've got your anti-infantry units your anti-vehicle units you've got your tanks you've got your big artillery units and you can also research a load of upgrades for every one of these there's a load of upgrades to, to use and and where this differs from the likes of command and conquer and other games is you don't have resources that you have to go and collect you build like a generator on your base which gives you electricity there's just two resources there's electricity and supplies and then you build a supply drop as well so you'll get supplies and electricity coming into your base you can upgrade both of them as well to get even more coming in and everything you build will either use supplies or electricity or a bit of both and so that's how you actually um go through the game but like i said everything can be upgraded your base can be upgraded your turrets your vehicle base your, your barracks your aircraft because there's, there's a lot of aircraft in this and they range from missiles to healers to um anti-air you've got uh, turrets that can be changed from anti-infantry anti-vehicle to anti-air as well so there's a lot of upgrading and then you have the leader powers which is what i mentioned earlier now what the leader powers are so like a wheel again built for a controller and they uh, they're quite good actually I quite like the, the there's mass healing through an area well it's pointless going through them all because there are different characters they're called hero characters that you choose when you play in a game and obviously you don't choose them in the single player campaign but if you do in skirmish you do you can choose from a different range of characters and they all have different hero powers that you unlock as the game goes on it's a bit like you know you had nukes and all that in command and conquer well this is where you would find them kind of things and there's all sorts of things from dropping turrets from buffing units from dropping in temporary units and all kinds of stuff like that so it does add a lot of depth there is a lot of depth to this game i mean i'm not going to lie to you there's a lot of depth to to be seen in this game and as an rts game it is fun to play where the problem is it's just not as good as the stuff that's already out on the pc and so you know, it's it's kind of a hard one to call. Now, there's a shit ton of content here. We also have a blitz mode and a multiplayer mode to get to. Yeah, now what blitz is, is like a card game. And it's quite fun, it has to be said. It's, it's quite a fun card game. You build your deck up and uh, you then play the games with your cards. I'm not going to go into that much because people, a lot of people don't like that. Um, people are going to buy this for the campaign, the skirmish and the multiplayer, not for the blitz. But the blitz is quite an innovative little thing that they've added to this and I do quite like it I mean we are living in a world now of card games and I am a sucker for a lot of them and uh, so I do like blitz but you know what you have to ask yourself here is you know it's 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 50 pound guys um the ultimate edition 64 and yeah you can get it cheaper on the likes of green man gaming but if you are a serious RTS fan I wouldn't touch this with a barge ball I, I mean if your idea of an RTS is Starcraft um, or CNC generals, then you're going to get this and you're going to go, hmm, right, okay. Um, but if you just want a bit of um, casual fun, then yeah, it's 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 worth looking at. It's, it's really, but I think it's too expensive, to be honest. Um, I just think £50 for this is a bit, even though you get a lot of, you do get a lot of modes in that. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very hard one to call. It really is. Um, I'm going to say that on the PC, it's not worth it because it's coming up against StarCraft 2 and Command and Conquer Generals, and both of them games absolutely blitz this. They really do. So does Grey Goo. Um, I like Ashes of the Singularity as well, and I just think they're all better games than this. Uh, they, they really are. They, they, they just play better. The cutscenes, I like a good campaign in, in RTS, and I hate this campaign because it is so bloody awful. It's so hand holy. I'm sick of the. Um, 
AI telling me what to do and warning me about everything. Honestly, there is no surprises in the campaign. You get warned about every single thing that's going to happen to you. It's so f***ed up. I don't know whose idea it was to do that. You know, it's just... It's, 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 it's messed up. So, it, for, as, a, as far as a PC game goes, no. It's not in the same league as what we used to. So, there you go, guys. It's... It's a solid RTS game, but it's just not as good as what you can get for a lot cheaper on the PC. And that's the problem. Um, but like I say, if you're an Xbox One user, get it. Like, you'll love it. Halo Wars 2 is not worth a buy if you're on the PC, but it is on the Xbox One. And one thing I want to say is, if you do buy this, you can use it on both the Xbox and the PC. I was just talking if you only own an Xbox and not a PC. That's when it's worth buying. But I'm on a PC, so it's not. Yeah. <laughs>